Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about lawnmower maintenance tips, and also, if you're in the market for a lawnmower, the different types of lawnmowers that are available. So I'd like to thank goodpodcast.com. They were nice enough to recommend our podcast as a good one to listen to. That was nice of them. And you can check them out at goodpodcasts.com. You want to start out with some maintenance tips? Sounds good. All right. And these are primarily for gas lawnmowers. Uh-huh. And a, a well-maintained gas mower should last you about 10 years. Wow. It's going to, the maintenance will add life to it. It's going to increase fuel efficiency. It's going to run smoother. And then, especially with the tip of sharpening your mower blade at least once a year, it's going to be much healthier for your lawn. So the first thing you should do every year is replace your spark plug. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty easy. If you have a socket set, you can buy a specialized socket. It has a rubber gasket inside of it, so it's very easy to take it on and off without damaging the spark plug. If you don't have a socket kit, there's a very inexpensive tool. It's a spark plug removal kit that you can buy at the hardware store. Right. And it's just basically a socket with a little bar mm-hmm. to tighten and loosen it. So very inexpensive, easy way to replace the and that's going to be by where all the uh, lawnmower repair stuff is. Exactly, all the Not parts. by the regular sockets. Exactly. Well, most most companies are, or most hardware guys are Well, it's gonna... considered a lawn and garden item, not a, a regular, you know, standard socket. Exactly. And what's nice about the spark plugs now is the gaps are preset. Whatever right. your lawnmower has, you look at the side, it's going to have the spark plug. You remove the old one, you pick up the same one and replace it. Very simple to do, something you should do every year. And that's going to help it start easier. You can have a real solid spark and it's going to run smoother. Where can you find out what type of spark plug you have? Is it going to be in your owner's manual? Or? It'll it'll be in the owner's manual. In most of them, some of them actually don't have it. I've I've read a few manuals because customers have brought them in. Uh-huh. So the easiest is just to look on the side of the spark plug itself, remove the wire from it, and you'll be able to see it easily. If not, then as you remove it, you'll be able to see it right on there. And then the next thing you should do every year is replace the air filter. And they're so inexpensive now mm-hmm. that, you know, and they used to try to clean them. And, you know, probably the worst thing you can do is try to hose them off mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, even use an air gun. Some people have used air guns on them and just they just tear up. You know, I would just replace it once a year. In the old days, what people used to do is add a little oil to the paper filter. Right. And they, you know, I, I don't even know, but they don't recommend adding oil to the filter anymore. Isn't that like stopping it from doing its job? Yeah, you would think so. And I don't know why that was popular. Hmm. So the next thing you should do every year is sharpen your mower blade, clean it and sharpen it, and also balance it. And they have a couple different kits you can get at the hardware store. One is really nice. It has a a little grinder that you can put onto your drill, Uh and it has a beveled and a flat side so that you get the the nice angle on your blade. And then it has a balancing tool that you set the lawnmower blade on, and then you can tell that you need to take more metal off one side. And you want that blade balanced because if it's unbalanced, you can actually shorten the life of your bearings Mm -hmm. on your mower. Don't they just sell a balancing, you know? They they sell the balancing tool by itself, uh, you know, and then it has the kit with the grinder and the tool. Right. If you don't have a belt sander, you can use a belt sander tool or a grinder. Mm -hmm. But a nice little tool that we sold a lot of at the hardware store was from AccuSharp. It's a, uh, I think they call it Garden Sharp. Right. And it has the bevel on it. So you take your blade off and you just use light pressure. It has a card by bit that lasts for years. So it's very easy to sharpen your blade. I have the one for the knives, for my like my chef knives. Yeah. And it's so easy to use and it does an amazing job. Yeah, it's I great. I tend to cut myself after I sharpen the knives. <laughs> but but it, does it, it slices through my skin just like butter. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> So to change your blade and to sharpen, or to remove the blade and sharpen it, I would always take off the wire from the spark plug so it doesn't accidentally start once you're moving that blade. Mm -hmm. I would lean the mower on its side, and you'd want the side with the filter and the spark plug facing up. Right. And then I always take a piece of of wood, like a 2 by 4 and I lay it on the ground. I put it into the base of the deck, and then that allows you to put the blade against it, wedge the blade against it, and then you're able to unscrew the nut. Once you take that blade off, then I would use a brush, get all the debris off, because you don't want that to give you a bad reading mm-hmm. you know, where, when you're balancing it. So you need everything scraped off there. Sharpen your blade, and then I always like to mark the side that's up, so I'll use a magic marker, or I'll take a, a tool and I'll scratch it so that I know what side's up. Because on some of these blades, 
it's difficult to tell once you remove it what side is up. Mm-hmm. Does it have to be a magic marker, or can you use any type of permanent marker? Any type of marker would be fine <laughs> in this case. Sometimes you need a magic mm-hmm. marker. Yes. So once the blade's back on, you can tighten it up. Again, I would use that 2x4 to wedge the lawnmower blade against so you can tighten the nut well. And that's all there is to it. So if you're in an area where you have cold season grass, where it freezes in the winter, you're going to want to do this at least once a year. Mm-hmm. But if you live in a, an area where you have warm season grass, you don't get a hard freeze, you'd probably want to sharpen your blade twice a year. And that's going to be much healthier for the grass and it's going to have less chance of spreading any type of lawn disease. So if you're not comfortable doing this by yourself, you could always take it to your local hardware store to get your blade sharpened. Yeah, I think most local hardware stores probably do it as one of their services. They'll charge you a small fee for it, but... But it's worth it if you don't want to go through the hassle. Mm -hmm. Another routine you should do every year is change the oil. And this is a routine that a lot of customers don't do because they just think it's difficult or a mess. Mm -hmm. A lot of the old mowers, they had a drain valve underneath the deck. Uh So it was difficult to remove that and drain the oil without it making a mess. But now, really the recommended way to change your oil is on the dipstick, where you have the dipstick. So you have that cap, you pull out the dipstick to check your oil. That's where you drain it and fill it from. So it's very easy. So what you would want to do is, again, remove the wire from the spark plug so it doesn't accidentally start. You're going to remove the dipstick, and then you're going to get some type of flat pan that you're going to pour the oil into. And at some hardware stores, they have a specialized pan for this. And then you're going to turn your mower on the side with the oil fill tube down, and then the side with the spark plug and the air filter that's going to be up, and you're just going to drain it. Uh, Before you drain it, though, you're actually going to let your mower run for five or ten minutes to warm up the oil. Mm -hmm. And what this does is it's going to drain very easy. And also all these particles, metal shavings, and this is what really shortens the life of your mower, is if you're not changing your oil, all these metal shavings beat it up and shorten its life. So when you warm up your engine, all these particles go into suspension, and then you're able to drain them out very easy. If you try to drain it with cold oil, Mm -hmm. it's going to take longer, and all these particles are going to settle at the bottom of the mower. So you drain it out, and then you flip it back over. You fill it. You're going to use probably the most popular for all lawnmowers is just a 30-weight oil. And you're going to fill it about 20 ounces. Check your manual, but almost all lawnmowers are 20 ounces. And most hardware stores have just a 20-ounce bottle, so it's very easy. And then you're going to check it. You don't want your oil too low or too high, so clean your dipstick. Let it set for a few minutes so that all the oil settles. Right. You're going to check it to make sure you're at the right level because it's kind of critical. And that's all there is to it. And if you do that once a year, you are going to add a ton of life to your lawnmower. You know what Briggs & Stratton just started? No. If you take your recycled oil, so the oil that you drained out of your lawnmower or or whatever device, to any of the Briggs & Stratton dealers, they will uh, take your old engine oil and recycle it for you. Oh, that's nice. So it's nice. So you can look them up in your local phone book or uh, online. Really a phone book? (laughs) And uh, you can find a Briggs & Stratton dealer. So those are the main tips of what you should be doing every year to maintain your mower. So that's what would be considered a tune-up. Yes. If you brought it to your local repair shop, that's what they would be charging you for. Right. And very easy to do yourself. So what I would do to add to this, every time I mowed, Mm -hmm. I would clean underneath the deck, especially if you have a mulcher. Because what happens is as that grass builds up, and sometimes it's very damp and full of moisture, Mm -hmm. so you have the chance of rusting out the, the deck much faster. And then also with a mulcher, it changes the way the airflow moves underneath it. So if you just take a minute, tilt the mower over to the side. Again, I would remove the spark plug wire, and I would take a a brush or even a broom and knock loose all that buildup so that it doesn't get too thick. Do you have to worry about, like, gas leaking out of the tank? I would always try to make sure that the the spark plug and the air filter is up, and that's going to solve a lot of it. One, One tip one of our customers gave us was... He was doing an oil change, and what he did was he take would take off the gas cap because when he did an oil change, it leaked. Uh-huh. He put a uh, a plastic baggie over that, and then he screwed down the the cap and just it just tightened it over it and created a gasket. Uh-huh. And then he would do his oil change; it wouldn't leak, and then he'd remove it when he was done. But I think that's a, a great trick if you have a, a gas cap that leaks. Uh-huh. You know, just put a baggie over it, screw your your uh, cap back down on it. It'll prevent it from leaking. 
What I like about a lot of the new mowers is they have this built-in wash port on the top of the deck. So it's this threaded tube where you can connect a garden hose to. You turn on your garden hose and you let your mower run and the blades splash this water up into the deck and they okay. clean off all the buildup of grass. And so you run this until you don't see any more debris. You turn off the hose and then you let it run for a few minutes so you can dry the deck so it doesn't rust. Speaking of rust. Yeah. So my dad, this is going back probably like five years ago, but he needed a new lawnmower. So I got one, you know, he spent a couple hundred dollars at the hardware store for right. a brand new lawnmower. I'm not going to mention the name of it because it's not their fault. <laughs> but uh, so he would mow the lawn. And this is after my sister and I had already moved out, of course. And uh, so he'd mow the lawn and then he was too lazy to put it into the shed. Okay. So he just left summer, it out. Summer and winter? No, this was just through one summer, but uh, he, okay. it was totally rusted by the time it really? was uh, really? the end of the season. I had to bring it into the hardware store for our small engine repair guy to right. look at it. And he's like, I've never, how old is this then? I'm like, <laughs> you know, it was like literally a year old. And, Amazing, I'm like, huh? and he's just like, I've never seen anything this bad. So wow. my suggestion is store it inside. Very good. <laughs> so another tip I would have during the season is to always use some type of fuel stabilizer and we've always used the stable brand name and customers have been very happy with that. We've used AMSOIL also mm -hmm. with uh, good results and every time you got gasoline so the gas can that you're going to the gas station filling with gas I would all, always add my fuel stabilizer when I get let's say a gallon of gas you add the recommended amount of fuel stabilizer and so that fuel is always going to be protected from breaking down quickly because gas within 30 days gas starts to break down loses octane it starts to get gummy so by putting a stabilizer in it every time you fill up your gas tank you've always got your fuel protected inside your mower mm -hmm. and let's say that you've filled your tank you haven't mowed much and now rather than forgetting about it mm -hmm. when you store all this you've always have the fuel stabilizer in it and I think that's just a great routine to get into well because like my dad always had you know we had always had one gas can for the snowblower one gas can for the lawnmower okay and so you know when he started me and my sister to uh, start mowing the lawn you know he'd say you know this is a gas can for that so he'd fill the tank and then I mean that fuel stayed in that gas can, you know, until it ran out. Right. You know, so, I mean, who knows, I mean, how long it stayed in there. And, you know, he would yell at us because we tried to start the lawnmower. And, you know, he's like, what's the problem? And, I mean, you, you know, pull and pull and pull. Because it loses that octane. Right. It but, I mean, I didn't know that at the time. Right. And, right. you know, he just yelled at me for being weak. <laughs> weak. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, we, I mean, I would pull, you know, 20 times. And then, of course, he'd come out and pull once. And it would right. be, it would start. But. Well, that's why that, that new, uh, from the company that makes Stable, they have that new product, Start Your Engines. Right. And so we've sold that to a lot of customers who, like at the beginning of the season, they didn't use a fuel stabilizer. Right. This adds octane. It helps clean it as you use it, too. Mm -hmm. But that's a, it's a nice tip, too. If you've got a, a mower and it's hard to start, I would try this product, Start Your Engines. It, it does a nice job of boosting the octane. You know, if you change your spark plug so you get good spark, Mm -hmm. In your air filter, you're getting oxygen, and then you have this high octane. Those are really the, the three things you need to, to start a, a mower. And I really then, ragged on my dad in this episode, yeah. didn't I? <laughs> Does he listen? No, oh, but good. Right. just so you know, I do love my dad. <laughs> That's good. So uh, one of the techniques that a lot of people used to always recommend is at the end of the season to run all of the fuel out of your lawnmower. So just right. let it run until there's no fuel left and store it. My grandpa it. always did that. And the problem uh, that most manufacturers have with that is that when you run the fuel out, there's mm -hmm. no longer fuel touching a lot of the rubber gaskets. Right. And so they can dry out and shorten their life. Mm -hmm. And then also you never can get all the fuel out. So those small amounts of fuel that remain in the, the lines mm -hmm. are going to start getting gummy, lose octane, and varnish. Well, so, I mean, I can remember being over at my grandparents' house, and we'd just sit there, and he'd have the lawnmower let's, just... Let's watch the mower till it runs out. Right, we'd sit on the picnic bench and just, <laughs> you know... I mean, the lawnmower is running, you can't hear anything, and it, I mean, it's so boring. And I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, it's like, this is just what we do. That's funny. So, so now what most manufacturers recommend is just make sure there's a fuel stabilizer in your gas, fill it to almost full, run it for a couple minutes to make sure that the fuel stabilizer is through the system, and then just store it 
for the season mm -hmm. with, a, with a full tank. So you want to go over a few tips if you're in the market for a lawnmower? Yes. If you're looking for self-propelled, it definitely makes the job easier, whether you're young or old. But there's two styles. You can get a front-wheel drive, which is less expensive. And a front-wheel drive is fine if you have a flat lawn. It makes it easy to turn because you can you can kind of push down on the handle, lift those front wheels, mm -hmm. and then you can manipulate the back wheels very easily because it's a front-wheel drive. If you have a yard that has any hills or rough terrain, you're going to get your best traction from a rear-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. It costs a little bit more, but you know if you've got a, a tough lawn and you want the lawnmower to do the job, a rear-wheel drive is the way to go. And I had a, uh, well, when I first bought this, this uh, last house, it was just an older home, pretty big size backyard, and it was just rough. They just let the house go. And there was a snapper there, so when I bought the house, I kind of inherited a snapper mm -hmm. uh, self-propelled lawnmower. And it's the first self-propelled I ever used, and I just loved it. It was mm -hmm. a workhorse, but it was probably like your dad. It must have been left out. And it was just rusted. And well, this is the same house that had the bee's nest, right? Bee's nest and, and holes in the attic where <laughs> birds were flying in and out. So everything in that house was rough, including... But that snapper was yeah, beat up and terrible looking. But it started. It was just a workhorse. It was mm -hmm. uh, beautiful. And then I got a Toro. After a couple of years, uh, we got our first hardware store. And uh, I bought one of the Toro. Actually, well, I bought it. But we had a customer return one. I don't know if you were there uh, when that no. lady... Um, said that it, it, it was going too fast, it, it moved too fast for her. <laughs> and what's unique about the personal pace is depending on how hard you push on the handle, mm -hmm. that's the speed it goes. So I'm trying to talk, in, and we gave her a refund and everything because she was a nice yeah. lady. But anyway, you know, so, you know, I wasn't going to get my money back. She had used it, right, used yeah. it and abused it, and uh, it was pretty new. And so I bought that, but that was a great machine, the uh, Toro Personal Pace, because rather than like a handle where you adjust the speed, right. This, as you push on the handle, it adjusts the speed. So really nice, nice mm -hmm. machine. And now I actually just bought the um, Toro Smart Store, which mm -hmm. is an amazing uh, lawnmower. So it, the handles fold up, and you can store it vertically. Oh, that's so if, nice. So if you don't have a lot of room in the garage, which I don't, uh, you can fold this thing up, store it vertically, push it into a corner, and you don't have this you know, big profile. Mm -hmm. So another really nice design for self-propelled besides the personal pace a varial speed lever is really nice to have because mm -hmm. you can adjust the speed how fast you're moving so another feature you can get on lawnmowers are the oversized rear wheels that yeah. feature became popular a few years ago yeah they claim that it's easier on rough terrain because the small wheels can drop into holes and divots and mm -hmm. then scalp your lawn and the larger wheels straddle that they claim it's easier to push uphill but what a couple of customers have told me is, you know, they got used to their old mowers where they push down on the handle and, and lift the front wheels to, right. to turn. The It's harder to do that. So if you have, you know, not as strong upper body strength, mm -hmm. you know, that's probably one of the downside of that. So another feature you can get is a, either a recoil versus the electric start. Mm -hmm. And on that personal pace I had, it had a uh, an electric start, right. which was really cool. I really liked it. Uh, recoil is you've got the cord that you pull to start it and uh, you know these new motors are so good that there's no more choke there's no more priming right it's amazing how easy it is to start these and in fact Toro has their GTS like on this new one I got that Toro smart store it has the three-year GTS which is it's guaranteed to start on the first or second pull mm -hmm. or they'll tune it up for you for free which is pretty amazing. The only thing that you got to realize is you have to maintain. So all those things we talked about maintenance, right? You have to maintain it, and they actually want you to keep a diary, which most people don't read the instructions. So you got to keep a diary. A lawnmower diary. Yeah, a lawnmower diary that you've maintained it, and if it doesn't start in the first or second pull, they will uh, tune it up for you for free. Dear diary, <laughs> mow the lawn again today. Do you have any thoughts about a bag versus mulch? I used to always be kind of a bag guy because I thought it looked better, especially in, in the... I, I used to always bag the front of the house and then mulch the back because I didn't like any clumps of grass. Right. But the more I've researched it, they say that mulching is very healthy. It doesn't add to the thatch. Mm -hmm. And it's actually... The nutrients, it's mainly water, but the nutrients are actually very healthy for the lawn and the microorganisms in your mm -hmm. lawn. So I've become an avid mulcher. 
I was really excited when my parents decided that we didn't have to bag anymore. Yeah, yeah, it is not. It is easy. Mm-hmm. And in a lot of mowers, you can get the the option of either having a bag, a side discharge, or mulching. Mm-hmm. And I would say always try to get a, a mulching lawnmower. It, it, I think it's just healthier for the lawn. So why don't we touch on electric lawnmowers? If you don't, which I, I just I got a Green Works 12 amp lawnmower for the front lawn, so mm-hmm. my son can do it. So I don't have to worry. And you know, he's. I tried to get him mowing when he was really young, yeah. and I didn't want to have to worry about him dealing with gas mm-hmm. or oil. And it's. I just like that that you don't have to store as much of this stuff. Mm-hmm. So it, you know, and although I've got the the other mower, but for the front yard, you know, my son he uses this. Uh, 12 amp mower and it does Do you have a different lawnmower you use on like the side of the house yes yes and actually the back of the house i've got a robotic lawnmower oh, that we can talk nice. about it is super cool <laughs> but the main thing with an electric lawnmower that you got to think about is what type of extension cord and this is the key to keeping your electric lawnmower in good shape and lasting long mm-hmm. for example this mine is a 12 amp and i use a hundred foot 12 gauge cord which will allow me to pull 15 amps now I could use a hundred foot 14 gauge cord Mm -hmm. which will allow 13 amps but if I tried using and so now you run to the hardware store you say hey I have an electric lawnmower you look at these 16 gauge 100 foot cords they're lightweight they're inexpensive but they only allow you to draw 10 amps so what does that mean for your lawnmower so so like for mine this uh, mine is drawing 12 amps and it's not going to be able to get enough electricity so it's it's going to put wear and tear on the motor itself Mm -hmm. it's going to possibly overheat and then you're trying to draw too much out of this cord so you can overheat the cord itself shorten the life of the cord you can dry out the insulation Mm -hmm. and there's a potential for a fire but the problem is that the mower will still work but you're still using the wrong cord. right and it's just not being able to run as what it's designed to do at, at a proper speed mm-hmm. so you're shortening the life of your mower so if you're using an electric lawnmower which I like I would say the most important thing to know is how many amps and then you need to know how many amps that your extension cord is drawing and you need to make sure those match mm-hmm. you know if you have a gas mower and you're thinking about an electric mower they've got some really cool programs throughout the country and if you go to the Department of Environmental Protection they've got a bunch of programs that that vary from state to state where you can bring in your old gas mower you can get a new electric mower and they'll give you a couple hundred dollars toward the new mower Oh wow! so it's a really nice program so I would say if you're in the market for an electric mower you know just go to to the Department of Environmental Protection plug in your state and see if there's anything available where you can get a, a really nice rebate another option if you want to go non-gas is a cordless mower yeah and what I picked up for my backyard because I have a very big backyard is the robo mow mm-hmm. and this is a robotic lawn mower wow it is super cool so I know you think it's super cool because you've super made me watch cool. videos on your phone <laughs> of the lawnmower. Yeah, you can go to our, our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement, right? and uh, check out my RoboMo. Which I've helped film, so <laughs> I don't need to see the extra video on your phone. So you put this low voltage wire all the way around where you want it to mow, and it actually edges also. It has a little charging station that it goes back to on its own. Mm -hmm. It charges itself up, and then you can set the schedule. You can have it mow once a week, twice a week, and it has a sensor. If it's rainy out, it won't mow, Mm -hmm. which is amazing. It has little bumpers if you have... It is. And if uh, it bumps into something, it'll reverse itself and move around it. But it does this random pattern, so you never get ruts in your yard, and it mows. So this is the first season I've tried it, so I'm actually excited by the end of the year I'll do like a, a review how I like it. But it's but so far, it's absolutely amazing. And it's it's weird that I like to watch it. I know. I like to just sit and watch this thing work. It's it's really cool. So that's another option. And, you know, it's it's a little pricey. But if you compare this, if you're considering having a lawn service, right. this RoboMo actually will pay for itself. And then year after year, mm-hmm. it just it just does the job. And it's it's cordless. Um, it's really easy to replace the battery. And the blades themselves, there's two blades underneath 
and they spin in different directions. So after a season, you just reverse them, so now they have a sharp edge. Oh, that's smart. And they say then after a few years, you just change them. Mm -hmm. The bearings are so small on these cordless mowers that, uh, at least on the RoboMow, they don't want you sharpening it because they're scared that if it's unbalanced, you'll shorten the life of the, mm -hmm. the thing, so just buy new blades. But it's, a, it's an interesting option. So there's a bunch of just cordless push mowers that you can get, and most of them have 40-volt uh, lithium-ion batteries. Craftsman has a really nice model that's considered, uh, it's rated very good. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the best out, or, or one of the highest rated, is this Ego. It's E-G-O, mm -hmm. and it actually has a 56-volt lithium-ion battery wow which is pretty amazing because like most most of your like uh heavy duty tools mm -hmm. are like 18 volt right <laughs> the craftsman is 40 volt mm -hmm. and this thing is a 56 volt battery so it's the most powerful on the market it is a 20 inch deck it'll mulch it'll bag it'll side discharge and you can get 45 minutes yeah. out of this battery so pretty amazing and it's pretty cool so i was on their website and you can take that battery and you change it from tool to tool. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually interested. I might I might check out that you've got a, a really cool, I need a new uh, hedge trimmer. And so mm -hmm. I actually might uh, try that. So if I get it, I'll, I'll throw that on the channel. But what's what's funny about this mower is it has LED headlights. <laughs> so, so, so if you're, you know, you just love this mower so much mm -hmm. that you're mowing into the evening, it has <laughs> LED headlights so you can you can do it in the dark. Uh, and the other thing it has, it's it's kind of like the Toro Smart Store. It, the handles fold up, and then you can store it vertically. Oh, nice. So and you it, don't have to worry about gas. Yeah, easy. So easy to clean. You can mm -hmm. just tilt it up, clean the base deck, and, uh, you know, very interesting uh, lawnmower if you're looking for cordless. So when we were researching this episode, we went through some of the trade magazines that we get and the consumer magazines and looking at the top-rated lawnmowers. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the market, the Greenworks is always rated really high for an electric one. Husqvarna, and Husqvarna is interesting, they have an all-wheel drive lawnmower, mm -hmm. so it's variable, variable speed. If you have rough terrain, if it's hilly, it's all-wheel drive. They have like really rugged looking tires, <laughs> so there's something for that. Uh, Poulan was rated high. Honda uh, did a great job in a lot of these customer uh, consumer magazines. Troy built, Craftsman, Snapper, that Ego, for the cordless. Cordless one was rated very high. Toro and Cub Cadet. Mm -hmm. So I think those, if you're looking for a lawnmower, those are probably the, the, top, the rated. top rated lawnmowers that you can get. I think that wraps up this episode then. If you'd like to subscribe, you can subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on Fix It Home Improvement channel on YouTube. And you can subscribe to that as well. If you want to talk to us, you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Thank you.